Earlier on, Franklin was called many different names in different countries. He was uh, Morton, and my favorite was Dorcas. I really, really, really liked that. But um, when Franklin became so popular, then Kiss Camp Press realized that Franklin really had to have one name everywhere in the world. There is an exception, and that's only in Quebec. And in Quebec, Franklin is a Benjamin, because historically, that was the name that they'd chosen, and we agreed that only in Canada we would have uh, Benjamin and Franklin. Um, this is a quote from Quill and Choir, and actually it ran under that 25th anniversary picture of Mabel's Fables. And I think that it describes to me the Franklin that I created and didn't know I was creating even better than I could do myself. But the quote is a little, it says, there are many lovably imperfect, fundamentally decent, slightly neurotic young animal characters out there. But Franklin is the true original. <laughs> the kids always teach me something too. In the very beginning, I was only going to have, in the, in the very beginning books, uh, there was no father figure. Um, I don't know why. At the time, I was, you know, happily married, and 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 uh, <laughs> and, and you know, the kid's dad was a, was a terrific model and father and everything else. Yet when I first wrote it, I didn't um, I didn't have any. It was a child sending me a letter, who said, "Could you please put a father in? I don't have one, and I'd really like to have one in the books." And it was just it was so touching, and I've received so many letters from uh, from dads and from boys saying, you know, you have no idea how nice it was to see a father in these books who wasn't portrayed as an idiot or as bumbling and, and who was there. And I didn't do that, I didn't do that um, consciously, but it was just this kind of world that I wanted Franklin, um, Franklin to live in. Um, letters also tell me very many, many poignant stories, children who've taken Franklin with them to hospital. Franklin has been a friend uh, for these kids, either as a plush or in the stories, and it's been, that's one of the best things, is knowing that something you created in a book has had a lasting impact on a child. Many, many children have learned to read with Franklin. I get letters all the time, and it's unbelievably gratifying. Mr. and Mrs. Turtle represent the kind of parent I wish I had been. They are patient, they are nurturing, they let Franklin come to his own decisions. If Franklin, if Franklin does something well, it's because he's earned it, and he's learned it, and he's owned it. It doesn't come from his parents or from his teachers or something else in the books. And I think that's what I think, I hope most of us as adults want to be for the children that we guide and nurture and, and bring up. Franklin is changing in terms of he doesn't tie his shoes anymore, he can, he can skateboard, he's a little tiny bit older, but he is still the same sweet, gentle guy. And what this represents to me is that with anything you can change, adapt, grow, retain the inner core of what it was. And the best thing about Franklin is that he's always allowed to fail and he's always allowed to take risks. And I think because of those two essential elements of his character, it's that Franklin is going to be innovative. I mean, if Franklin were to really grow up as a real kid, by learning how to take risks, by learning how to fail, by learning how to get encouragement and support during those times, um, that's where innovation and real success comes from. And I hope if children can learn that from Franklin, then that's a really good thing. Thank you so much.